Welcome to the Controversial Truth, where we bring you content on health and wealth that nobody would ever tell you until now. I'm your host, Dr. Victoria Munoz, and today we have a very special episode for you in our TG Wellbeing series. We are going to go over the content of our blood kits and why they're important. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome to another series of our TG Wellbeing podcast. And I'm here, I'm Dr. Victoria Munoz, and I'm here with Eli yes. and Adam. Adam and Eli are owners of the TG Gyms here in Mesa and Phoenix, Arizona. And we are coming together to create a great program for you called the TG Wellbeing Program. And a big part of this program is blood kits and so what we're doing is we are offering blood kits and a consultation with me at a price and this is the women's kit and this is the men's kit Sorry. and basically what these kits are doing is it's giving you a snapshot of your health to help you get optimized and the results that you want in the gym and outside the gym. So. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about what's on the kits because a lot of people have been asking us, hey, what's on the panel? So we're going to talk about that. Now, this is the men's kit in the black box, and I'm going to go over the men's kit first. Yes. So to start, we have testosterone, both total and free. And the importance of testosterone is not only for getting results in the gym or for libido, or you know, for energy, but it's also indicated for longevity and health. Now what happens is, when the testosterone is low in men, often the estrogen goes up. And that's just kind of a natural evolution of how hormones work over time. But we don't want that, because as testosterone goes down, estrogen goes up, inflammation also goes up in the body, and that leaves us susceptible to a lot of health issues, chronic disease, cancers, autoimmunity, and uh, just chronic inflammation, which causes joint pain, back pain, and arthritis. So testosterone is very important for longevity. Okay. And so we've got the free and the total, and the sex hormone binding globulin, along with the albumin, those all have to go together. Albumin really just shows us the concentration of the proteins in the blood. So essentially, if uh, you are dehydrated, it will be higher because you have less fluid in the blood. It can also be a marker of inflammation, but there are other markers of inflammation that I as a doctor like to look at that are a little more definitive. And then we have hematocrit, and we always have to look at hematocrit because hematocrit can go up, testosterone's too high. So especially for men, that's important, and we do monitor the testosterone very closely uh, because as a, we start modulating hormones, well, even once we're within a normal range, which for men it's 700 to 1,000, um, it can fluctuate depending on your sleep, your diet, your stress, and you know how much you're working out and so forth. Yeah, all day. Yeah. yeah. So the next lab we have is PSA, uh, and that's just basically a measure of prostate health. So we look at that number, and if it's out of range, obviously you'd want to see your primary care doctor to get a full follow-up and evaluation of why that is high. 
but as long as it's within normal range, we don't need to refer out. And it's just something that's good to check for men to ensure that your prostate health is within normal range. The next thing is vitamin D. Mm. And vitamin D is not actually a vitamin, it's a hormone. And the importance of vitamin D is that it helps everything else run efficiently in terms of hormone health. So if vitamin D is low, then you have less production of your sex hormones. Mm. And on this channel, I'm gonna be doing a series on cholesterol and how cholesterol works. But what I'm going to show you, and you can refer to that video uh, once it's up, which should be after this weekend, you're going to see how vitamin D is produced through the whole uh, cholesterol algorithm to producing hormones. So what we're going to do is, in that video, is I'm going to debunk the myths of cholesterol. I'm also going to show how taking statins is dangerous for your health and why and statins actually block the production of uh, vitamin D. I know we're not in the cholesterol uh, video, but what, what's a statin? Oh, a statin is a, drug, yeah. is a drug that conventional medical doctors will throw at patients if their total cholesterol is over 200. Oh, so it's like a high cholesterol drug. Or yeah, but we're gonna talk more about that, not in this video, but you can refer to the other videos. Um, and you know, eventually I'll put the link in this description of this video so that you can refer to it and watch it because it's going to be very important to help you navigate your health. We need the education too. So. Yes. We all do. And as a doctor, I'm educating myself every day. Mm -hmm. I'm reading research. I'm following other doctors that have information. And, and the research is not coming from uh, research studies that are conducted by pharmaceutical companies or the food industry. It's by independent researchers and doctors that are actually giving us real information about our health and how studies. things work. Yes. Yeah. So, all right, so that's vitamin D in a nutshell. Then we have cholesterol, and the cholesterol is actually a lipid panel. So we have total cholesterol, we have HDL, LDL, and VLDL, and triglycerides. Now I'm not gonna go into detail about how those work because that will also be in an upcoming video, and I'm gonna refer you to that video, and also I will put the link in the description below. But basically, cholesterol, is important for the production of our hormones. If our cholesterol is low, our hormone production is low. And if our cholesterol is high within normal range, which that is, you know, up for debate, then uh, we have the proper production of hormones, which we need for life, right? We run, our, our vitality, our life runs on hormones. If we are not metabolically sound, then we are not we're not functional. And if you do not have functional hormones, eventually you will die. Mm -hmm. So cholesterol is important for the production of hormones. And so when doctors start to lower it with these statin medications, then it puts the patient at risk for chronic disease and other problems mm -hmm. as a result. And there's a lot of reasons for that, which we won't go into today, but we will in another video. For sure. So, and the VLDL. So HDL and LDL has been deemed as good cholesterol and bad cholesterol, but that's not actually true. Uh, we need, we actually need higher levels of LDL for immune health. Mm -hmm. And patients that have higher levels of LDL are actually healthier. They don't get sick, they don't get chronic disease as frequently, and they live longer. So we're, we're going to uh, go more into detail about that again in another video, but it's just important to understand that when I am, you're in front of me and we're going over your panel and I'm telling you that an LDL of, you know, like even 200, 300 is okay. What we want to do is we want to look at everything in the panel, not just the total cholesterol and LDL, which we want to be high, but we want your triglycerides to be low and your HDL to be high. HDL is heart protective. So, it shields heart protective, LDL is immune protective, just mm. kind of to simplify things. And we want triglycerides to be low, and that has a lot to do with everyone's everything to do with their diet. That's great. Yeah, so. Great info. Yep, and then we have the AST and ALT. Now these are actually enzymes 
that are produced by the liver, but not just by the liver, but other cells in the body actually produce these. And AST can be, in, it can be evident of inflammation in another part of the body, not just the liver. The ALT is more specific for liver, even though these enzymes can be produced by other organs of the body, which indicates like um, inflammation and some kind of uh, backup in a metabolic pathway. Mm. So we want to look at those because when we start giving, well, when we start giving testosterone, because it's met metabolized through the liver, we want to make sure those pathways are clear and that nothing is backing up and creating inflammation. So, 100%. and the testosterone doesn't cause the inflammation. What happens is if there's inflammation due to another cause, then the testosterone can back up and it's not metabolized properly through the liver and then we have problems. Mm. And then the last but not least is the estradiol. Yes, men do have estrogen, but they have it in different quantities. Hopefully, okay. if it's high, that is a problem in men. So we always look at the estradiol because it goes hand in hand with the t testosterone. And this can happen organically or can happen when we're doing TRT, testosterone replacement therapy. So what happens is when we, when as men age, their testosterone goes down, their estrogen can go up, and when the estrogen goes up, that's when men are susceptible to chronic disease, like prostatitis, um, prostate cancers, and um, you know hypertrophy of the prostate gland. So it's, it has nothing to do with the testosterone, it has everything to do with the estrogen. However, we want to look and make sure that what's happening is when this happens, it's called aromatization. And there's ways to stop it, but we have to monitor very closely to ensure that the testosterone is not going down the pathway to create estrogen or estradiol specifically, that we want it to keep going down the pathway to continue to produce and make uh, testosterone efficiently. So that always has to be monitored for that reason because uh, aromatization is is common, it doesn't happen to everybody, but it's common. Mm -hmm. And like I said, even if you're not doing TRT, it can happen. So it's really important to get your blood work done to make sure that your hormones are optimized, that nothing's going down the wrong pathway and creating inflammation and chronic disease in your body. Awesome. So that's the men's that's the men's kit. Wow. Yep. And everything that's in this kit is everything that you need to optimize your health. If, like I said, if there's anything else that needs to be monitored, you can come to me and you can establish care as a private patient and we can go over other things that may be indicated for your health. Now, on to the women's kit. Which is what I'll be taking. <laughs> <laughs> he, already, he already has. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I think the women are going to be really excited about this lab panel because we do have testosterone on it and we're going to start with that. So yes, just like men have estrogen, women have testosterone, and testosterone, just like men, is indicated for health, longevity, and vitality. And the difference is, is that men need higher doses than women, but ironically, women at their small dose, the small levels that they need, gives them the same outcome in terms of health. So, so we have free and total for the women, and like I said, it's a different, obviously a different range we're looking at to bring women into balance. And then the sex hormone, hormone binding globulin and albumin, they go hand in hand with this, this blood um, panel. So the albumin again is a protein in the blood, it's more indicated for uh, our level of hydration and but we do want our patients to be hydrated because it's better for kidney function and, and uh, every metabolic process in the body, every cell requires adequate hydration in order to function properly. So if you're dehydrated, then your cells aren't working properly and your metabolic function can decline. And then, um, oh yeah, I forgot to talk about hemoglobin A1C. It's on both panels with the men's and the women's. And what the hemoglobin A1C is, is it's a, it's a measure of your blood sugar over a three month period. So you don't necessarily have to be fasting for this lab. But what it shows us is where your glucose has been running over a three month period, and it is actually a measure of your risk for diabetes. So when I look at this, and I look at the number, 
We want it to be ideally 5.2 or lower, but if it starts to get up about 5.4, 5.5, we just monitor it closely. Now, when it starts getting to be 5.6 or higher, that's when we start being concerned. And that's when we start to look at, we run further panels and further blood studies to determine uh, where you're at with your risk of diabetes. That's for men and women? For men and women, yeah. So everybody has that on the panel. And then of course, the vitamin D for women, and we already just discussed how that is actually a hormone, and it's important for every, not only every metabolic process in the body, but also for our immune health, for the production of sex hormones, and also, studies have proven that adequate doses of vitamin D can actually remove plaque, calcium, uh, calcium plaques from your arteries. So. Crazy. So, awesome. And it's, it's a cheap vitamin. Yeah. And it's a cheap yeah. vitamin, yes. But you don't want to get it over the counter. So if, if you are interested in any uh, vitamins, then you want to talk to me because I can set you up with an um, a online medicinary that offers physician-grade supplements that, right. that are indicated for health. and, uh, and uh, That's great. I didn't know if uh, even that needed to be it's better to not get over the counter vitamin D3. You know? Yeah, I mean, we, we could do a whole series on over the counter supplements because if you're buying supplements over the counter, first of all, we know that most of the time what they say is in it is not in it. Right. And right. Um, secondly, the, the companies that I use actually send their products to third party labs to be tested for purity because they know that doctors like myself are prescribing these for the patients. Cool. And, and if I recall, you had mentioned that the pharmaceutical grade vitamin D isn't much more costly than over the counter. Right? It's not, but it's it's going to get you the results. Yeah, yeah. And I've been I've been doing, I've been in medicine for almost thirty years, and I will tell you this: that I've never seen a blood panel come out good from a patient that's using over the counter supplements. I have actually had a few patients at times they run out and they run to Costco or someplace to get supplements yeah, because they. You know, they run out, they don't have, they think, well, I don't have time to wait for them to ship it to me from full script, right? And then they come back and the blood panels are just horrible. Huh. Horrible. You know, their, their vitamin D is in the tank and you name it. So, yeah. and then again, um, with women as well, we've got the, we've got the cholesterol panel, uh, the total cholesterol, HDL, LDL, triglycerides, and the VLDL. And I just explained what all those do. The VLDL and the triglycerides actually go hand in hand because if your triglycerides are high, your very low density lipoprotein is also going to be high, and that is a definitive marker of what your risk for cardiovascular disease is right now. So we don't run the lipo A. That is not really an indicator of cardiovascular health, and it is there's no real studies that prove that it really gives us uh, good information about where you're at cardiovascular disease risk-wise. So, so the, the bow proteins? Uh, the lipoprotein A. So lipoprotein, lipo little A, yeah. some people call it. Um, it's more of a genetic marker, and as we know, genes do not determine the outcome of our health. We do. Mm -hmm. So if we're eating crappy food and we're stressed and we're not managing uh, you know, good health habits, good sleep hygiene, right. then you, know, you, you put yourself more at risk for genetic anomalies. We all have genes that can cause disease. Right. Every single one of us have genes that can cause a serious illness. The reason that some people get illness and some people don't is exactly that, how they're managing their health. Their, their food and yep. know, hormones, all that. And it's not as easy as you think, so it's good to consult with a doctor like myself to get on track and to get yourself optimized. And that's why we're doing this, is to help you to have better health and also to find disease before it becomes symptomatic. Love it. A lot of people have, for by the time they have symptoms of disease, They're that sick. disease has been yeah. Yeah. manifesting for at least 20 years. Yeah. So. Wow. Wow. And, and just something I wanted to bring up, because I know it was, to me, it was new news, I used to the LDL, high LDL can be good. You know, a lot of us think of that as bad. Mm -hmm. um, in our discussion, you know, you had mentioned, I know we're gonna do a cholesterol video, but just maybe to kind of mm -hmm. lightly explain, it's the big LDL molecules that are good and the small yep. that are bad. So distinguishing the type of LDL is what's important. Absolutely. So let me let me take some time to go over uh, cholesterol and the truth about cholesterol right now. Is that totally. right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So when we run, when I run a red lipid panel, I'll I'll run total cholesterol. I'll do an HDL, 
which is high density lipoprotein. It's not actually the cholesterol, the, the HDL is actually a carrier, and so is the LDL, because um, lipids are not water soluble, so they need a carrier to move through the blood to get to where they need to go, okay? Which would be a fat. So the HDL, yeah, yeah, a lipid is a fat. Mm -hmm. And so the HDL is actually a cholesterol and a triglyceride molecule, and the LDL is actually a cholesterol and three triglycerides, mm -hmm. okay? That's just a little more scientific, but that's what it is, okay? Cool. So we have the HDL, which has been called good cholesterol, and we have the LDL, which has been called bad cholesterol, which this is not actually true, they're both good. It's common knowledge. Well, common knowledge to people in the industry, that's what I would think. Yeah. Yeah, because that's the information that's out there. Mm -hmm. And then we have triglycerides, right? And that's the that's not actually fat in your diet, that's sugar in your diet, mm -hmm. okay? And then we have the VLDL, which is very low density lipoprotein, and if your triglycerides are high, your VLDL is gonna be high, and that means you're more at risk for cardiovascular disease, heart attack, and stroke, okay? So, so if your triglycerides are high and you said your HDL are high? No, when your triglycerides are high and your VLDL is high, VLDL, yeah, okay. they go hand in hand, so we look at that to see where you are at in terms of your risk for heart attack or stroke. Mm -hmm. Now, the LDL, we're gonna talk about this specifically for a minute. So it's not just the LDLC, which is the LDL cholesterol, or the total the total LDL cholesterol that we're concerned about. Uh, I have patients that are in the 300s, 350, for example, for the total, um, you know, the total cholesterol might be about 350, and their LDL might be 200. And most doctors will look at that and just panic. But what I do is when I see that, I look at the triglycerides. If triglycerides are low. We're pretty sure that the inflammatory markers in the cholesterol profile are low. And what that is, is with the LDL, we have large particle LDL and we have small particle LDL. Now, large particle LDL is what we have naturally, okay? What happens is when we have fats and sugars in the diet, the sugars attach to the fat molecule, and what happens is it's called glycation. Glycation is when the sugar molecule attaches to that fat molecule, that LDL molecule, and makes it sticky, hard, and dense. Now, when we look at the liver, the liver has receptors for the large particle LDL, but it does not have receptors for the small particle LDL. So that small particle LDL will circulate through the blood and it will eventually settle in the arteries where it becomes plaque. Mm -hmm because our body has no way to uptake that. So it settles in the arteries, develops plaque, and then we have inflammation in the body as a result, and we're at risk for heart attack or stroke. So when we look at LDL in and of itself, it's not bad. What we need to do is look at the breakdown of the particle size to determine the patient's overall health. I can pretty much tell that if the triglycerides are low, their small particle LDL is gonna be low if not negligible. Mm. Now, we could also go as far as to sending the patient for a CAC, which is a calcium, uh, I mean a, a, um, a coronary artery calcium level. And it's, a, it's an imaging study. We'd send them to someplace like Simon Med or Banner for imaging of this, uh, for this imaging study. And that would be a very definitive marker of whether that patient has plaques in their arteries. Now, sometimes patients go on and they change their diet it takes a while for that to resolve, mm. and it can, even though some doctors will say it can't. Yeah. Like I said, vitamin D does have the ability to remove those calcium plaques from our arteries oh. and, and clean them out yeah. safely and effectively. So, Pretty cool. Yeah, so that's what we do. So if you came to me and we were reviewing your panel and you had high cholesterol, you had high LDL, but your HDL was low, which is heart protective, and your triglycerides were high, then you need to come to see me for uh, further studies, like an NMR, to run those particle size uh, sizes to see where you're at in terms of your health. Yeah. Yeah. Good information. So that's how that works, and so that is the women's kit, and that is the men's kit. Beautiful. And we're going to encourage you to come down and get started on this program because there's no other place that you can go to actually get a snapshot of your health 
that's really going to give you the information you need to optimize yourself to get the results in the gym, mm -hmm. to get the results outside of the gym, and just to look and feel your best. And be confident in it. And be confident. You know, yeah. not just be playing the guessing game like so many of us in the, the fitness, bodybuilding, competitive industry do. Mm -hmm. It's time to end all that. Right. Mm -hmm. How many of you are competing, are working to go pro, and frustrated with not being able to get the results that you want? Well, it comes down to your training is good, your diet may or may not be good, I don't know. We could talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, and diet isn't what people think it is either because cholesterol, I mean, I'm sorry, because carbohydrates are not a, an essential nutrient. So, um, another video for another time. Yeah. Lots of good info. Yeah, yeah, lots of good info. Unfortunately, we don't have time today to go over everything. That's why we're going to do a video series. Right. But, um, um, but maybe you're retaining water or right. you're not being able to get as lean as you want. Yeah, you need to have your hormones checked because yeah. that is where the, the fine tuner of your results is gonna be getting your blood work done, checking your hormones, and getting the results that you want. That's so good. Yeah. You don't have to be a competitor yeah. to, you know, to- Well, optimize that. your health in that. Yeah. Work, work out and live a long life, a long, healthy life. Right. You know, feel better, think better, everything. Yeah, everything. exactly. And, you know, uh, your hair will start, stop falling out, and your nails yeah. will start growing, and your skin will tighten up, and yeah. you know, who doesn't want to even look more youthful and be more vital. All day long. Yeah. Right. So there's a lot of reasons why you should do this, but ultimately it's for you and for your health and we're here to help you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and super convenient. So yeah, super convenient. That's, that's super convenient. Idea. So. Yep. Cool. Anything else you guys want to talk about? No. no. That was good. That was a lot of good information. I'm excited to uh, expand on you know each of these with cholesterol and break everything down and some other future yeah. videos that we'll have. Yeah, but no, all good information. Yeah. Super easy, guys. That's right. So right from home. Yeah. Super easy here yeah. at the Gym Mason, at, at the Gym Phoenix, and other teaching locations. Yeah. Um, but that's the difference with us, too, is we actually live and walk this life. You know, um, all of us, you've been training all your life you know, as an athlete. Uh, I've been training and still compete. Uh, Adam's been doing it with me since we were 15 years old. So it's not something that we just talk about, but we actually walk, walk it. And, since I was about 25, I've been doing my blood work and, um, you know, scratching at men's vitality centers and some people just, they can make it really awkward. Uh, it's hard to tell people the truth about what you're doing, especially as a bodybuilding athlete. Um, and that's what's great about uh, Dr. Victoria's here. She um, is an athlete. She knows the industry. She's competed before. You can be open and honest with her and still be protected with your privacy. Yeah. So that's the main difference uh, between us and you can conveniently just take this home, send it in, get your call in with the doc, and then you guys can uh, talk about your health a lot more privately uh, and with people that understand what we do. So that, that's the cool and main main difference with what we're doing here. So yeah. so you can take our bro science with real actual doctoral science yeah. and uh, conclusively bring it all together. So. Hey Adam, do you wanna um, just talk about how the program works? Yeah, so, you know, in terms of the blood test kit, you know, it's something that we sell in person at the gym. Um, it's 199 bucks, guys. 199 bucks for this blood test kit that you take home, do right from your home. It includes the mailing slip. Um, you get all the results via email. Dr. Victoria gets the results as well. And that includes the consultation with Dr. Victoria that you're getting to go over the blood test kit itself. Which is excellent. Uh, which is excellent. It's amazing. Um, you get to sit down with a professional, go over it, and actually understand what the, the blood test is saying. You know, I, I know for me, I see markers that are off and then I speak with Dr. Victoria and you know, I see us off and she's like, nothing, you know, everything else looks good. Uh, so you really get a good understanding of it. Uh, but it, again, you can come into the gym, purchase it right from the front desk counter, uh, $199, that's all inclusive with the kid, the consultation, everything involved with it. And we also recommend that you do it every 12 weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So once you sign up the program, I mean, just do it one time just to check your labs. But mm -hmm. uh, if you only do it one time, I can't prescribe. Mm -hmm. So if you just if we determine that you need TRT, which is testosterone replacement therapy, you definitely need to do that yeah. under the guidance of a doctor, not off the street. Okay, yeah. I'm just yeah. gonna say that right now because I've worked with a lot of competitors, so yeah. I, I know how things work but usually and with the latter way right? yeah yeah and, and with that too it's it's crucial to be getting your labs done every 12 weeks you know i know for me i've been doing my last until about 25 as well at the same time elias started 
And over the years, you know, even though maybe my TRT has been the same or whatever might have stayed the same, my blood labs have changed. So getting that continuously done every 12 weeks keeps you up to date, keeps you monitoring what's going on so you can make any necessary adjustments because your hormones don't just stay the same. You know, they do change as we age, they do change, uh, you know, fitness activity, uh, our diet, everything can, you know, essentially change that. So if that's altering, then your hormones and your, your blood can be altering too. So it's crucial to be doing it every 12 weeks, not just a one and done. Right, and so if I'm prescribing, it is required that you come in every 12 weeks for your blood work and then your prescription, so. As it should. Awesome. Yep. Cool. All right, guys. Well, hey, thanks for tuning in. Thanks so and much. Where can people find us? Yeah, we're here in Gilbert and Southern in uh, Mesa, Arizona, uh, 1126 South Gilbert Road. Another location in Phoenix off 51 in Thunderbird. I do not know that. 3901 East Thunderbird, right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so you if go. you're in Arizona, those are our two locations. You can uh, sign up with our program at either location. And if you're Outside of Arizona, well, uh, we have a program also running in California and Florida. So that's right. Yeah. Yep. And then follow us on uh, Instagram, the Gym Mesa and uh, TG Phoenix AZ. And you do not have to be a member of the gym, though we recommend it to do guys. this. Yep. You can be a non-member and contact us and get on board with our TG Wellbeing program, and we're happy to help. So nice. Follow the instructions at home and give them a try. Oh. The, women, oh. the women's one that I conveniently take. <laughs> Ready to flex? Cool. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. All right. Boom. I'm a pro. See you next time. <laughs> Thank you so much.